today, I'm gonna share my absolute favorite computer for writing. It has the best portable typing experience, great battery life, and doesn't offer a ton of distractions. These days, I usually write my first drafts on an iPad. I explained why in a previous video, but the iPad isn't what we'll be talking about today. That'll be this computer, which is fairly modern, but harkens back to the good old days of computing. If you somehow skip the title of the video, this is the ThinkPad 25, a modernized version of the classic ThinkPad 700C meant to celebrate the 25th anniversary of IBM's first laptop. Announced in 2017, I initially didn't pay much attention to it because companies often release anniversary or special edition devices that are little more than differently colored versions of existing products. While the ThinkPad 25 is based off of the ThinkPad T470, one thing immediately caught my attention, the keyboard. But more on that in a bit. A fun cosmetic difference is the multicolored ThinkPad logo on the lid and inner palm rest, which references the older IBM logo that appeared on many ThinkPads before Lenovo bought the business in 2005. Incidentally, after the Lenovo acquisition, many tech enthusiasts worried that the Chinese company would mishandle the ThinkPad brand. Luckily, that's not been the case at all, and Lenovo has struck a fine balance between respecting the past and looking towards the future with innovative designs. The ThinkPad 25 is one example of Lenovo's respect for the past. I've heard that the original ThinkPad creators referenced a bento box in its design, so the ThinkPad 25 ships in packaging that if you squint, kind of resembles a bento box. My favorite part of the box is that the inner red section rises up as you open the double lid. Since this ThinkPad uses the T470's chassis and components, that means it comes with both a fingerprint reader and Windows Hello facial recognition cameras. It's also extremely sturdy, having passed mil-spec tests for vibrations, sudden shocks, high humidity, and even extreme temperatures. It has a small internal battery in addition to a three cell removable battery, which I quickly replaced with a six cell unit for better battery life and also a more ergonomic typing angle when the computer is set on a flat surface. The bigger battery gets me 10 to 12 hours of mixed use writing time before the need to recharge. And that can be extended even further if you disable Wi-Fi and set the processor to run more economically. Unfortunately, or Fortunately, depending upon how you feel about Windows 11, the Core i7-7500U and NVIDIA, I think, 940MX combination aren't certified to work with Windows 11, so you're stuck with Windows 10. I'm pretty sure you could manually install Windows 11 if you want, but why bother? Either way, you're not buying this computer for graphics intensive tasks like photo or video editing, and the processor is more than sufficient to keep up with web browsing and writing. Not that this matters a lot to me, but it also has a great selection of ports, especially for a 2017 device, including an ethernet jack, three USB-A ports, a full-size HDMI port, a card reader, and even a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C port with which you can charge the computer if you left the power cable at home one day. The screen isn't gonna win any awards, but it does have one feature that I love, which I'll get to in a second. First though, it's 14 inches and 1080p with a disappointing backlight, so it's not particularly sharp or bright, and there's some light leakage in the corners that's visible when displaying dark images. It's also a touchscreen for some reason, though I hardly ever use that functionality. What I love is that it's a matte display, something increasingly uncommon, especially on portable devices. Glare and reflections on high gloss displays are very hard for me to ignore while working. And this ThinkPad doesn't have that issue. I almost always prefer matte displays, and I even paid extra to have one on my iMac. And glossy displays, aside from the reflections issue, tend to oversaturate colors to the point that they look garish, even after color calibrating the display with something like a spider. Anyway, I'm pleased the ThinkPad came with a matte display by default, which I read might have something to do with the way the touch layer is integrated into the screen, but I'm not sure if that's true at all. Now, let's get to the best part of this laptop and the reason why it's so great for writing. The keyboard. In 2012, 
Lenovo discontinued the iconic ThinkPad keyboards for chiclet style layouts, which were and still are all the rage. The newer keyboards are pretty great typing experiences, but my opinion is that the older style is just incomparably more satisfying. I often take months or even years to make a hardware purchase of this size, and I usually sell older devices to help pay for it, but I was so sure that I needed this classic ThinkPad design that I skipped all that and spent $1,800 the moment it came up for pre-order. I also never regretted the purchase. In fact, these machines are selling for at or above their original retail price on eBay, and I'm pretty sure it's at least in part because of the keyboard. Some people were upset by Lenovo's newer keyboard layout because it has one less row, six as opposed to seven, and that never really bothered me, though I do appreciate the dedicated mute, and volume, page up, down keys. The double height escape and delete keys are also really cool. Then there's a couple keys I don't really use. For example, I had to actually look up what the scroll lock key even does, only to find that there's some very enthusiastic Excel users who swear by it. But the real magic happens below the top row. The typing experience is, and I don't think I'm exaggerating, the best you can find on this form factor. Depending upon whether you prefer full-size mechanical keyboards or not, it may even be the best typing experience in any form factor. And for me, who prefers writing on portable devices, it's simply the best. The keys bottom out at 1.8 millimeters, though they feel perhaps a bit deeper due to their uncanny stability and decently strong actuation force of 67 grams. They spring back with unerring enthusiasm, and they provide just enough padding at the bottom to combat fingertip soreness, which sounds silly, but it can become a real problem on a shallow board if you're typing all day. With the larger 6-cell battery tilting the laptop forward, the deck is at a comfortable angle for my wrists. And speaking of wrists, something that lots of people don't consider is the feel of the palm rest. Sharp edges and cold metal aren't comfortable over long typing sessions, but this Lenovo has a soft touch material that manages not to collect grease or dust while still being comfortable enough for hours of typing. While typing at speed, I don't notice any flex in the deck, and even prodding the board produces minimal movement. I've written an entire novel on this keyboard, and I'm actually planning to write my next book on it starting in February. And consider subscribing to my channel to follow along as I experiment with some more vlog-style video content next month. But anyway, as I'm sure you've already noticed, the ThinkPad comes with the iconic joystick nubbin, which you can use in conjunction with the mouse click buttons. They even thoughtfully packed three additional nubbins in the box if you prefer a different shape and texture. I never use this combination though, as I find the trackpad much more precise and versatile. And the trackpad is about as good as you'd expect for a Windows device, though I will forever insist that Apple's trackpads are somehow always better than any Windows PC I've tested. The keys also have a serviceable backlight, which is inarguably more elegant than the Think light included on old ThinkPads. This was a light along the top bezel above the screen that pointed down to illuminate the keyboard in dark conditions. It'd be foolish to include on the ThinkPad 25 because keyboard backlights are so much less intrusive, but I still would have loved it. I do just about all my writing in Scrivener, and now that Scrivener 3 for Windows is finally released after many years of delays, I find myself switching back to the ThinkPad from my iPad. I also enjoy having a device I exclusively use for writing, and not watching videos, coding, Photoshop, etc. When I pull out the ThinkPad 25, my brain switches into writing mode. If you have the money to spend or happen upon a good use deal, I wholeheartedly recommend one of these devices, and I really hope that we don't have to wait for the 50th anniversary of the ThinkPad for another model with this excellent keyboard. The ThinkPad 25 may be my favorite writing device, but let me know what you use in the comments. I'm pretty new to making videos, so I hope this was informative. And to be honest, I usually just sit in the dark all day and write without a lot of human interaction, so this is a fun break. Anyway. Thanks for watching, and consider subscribing for my next video, which will be about why an e-ink tablet is a crucial part of my editing process.
See you soon.